everyone, Uncle Jesse here. Today we're gonna to be testing out a new way to smooth out your FDM 3D prints. And it's involving using Bondo Spot Putty, but it's not the way that you're thinking. We're gonna be thinning it down so that we can actually spray it on our 3D prints. The first time I saw this was by Darkwing Dad here on YouTube, who has a fantastic channel all around finishing your 3D printed props. And I highly, highly recommend going out and checking out his channel. I'll have links down below to that, as well as a link up here to his original video that is a much more detailed, in-depth version of the video that I'm doing here. But I had to test this out because I'm all about finding new ways to more efficiently smooth out our 3D prints. In order to do this, we need a handful of things. Obviously, you're gonna need the Bondo Spot Putty. This is not the standard Bondo that you're gonna get in the big containers that requires what's it, uh, like a hardener activator. This is just a paste that you can squeeze out and rub onto your prints and it'll automatically cure and then you can sand it smooth. We're also gonna need some mixing cups and some stir sticks just to mix everything together. And we're also gonna need an airbrush and there's no way that I'm gonna be using my expensive Iowata airbrush and I would not recommend that for this type of project here because more than likely things are gonna clog up and you're gonna ruin something along the way. But I did go over to Harbor Freight and they have $10 airbrush kit. So it doesn't have the compressor that you're gonna to need to operate with, but these are cheap alternatives that we should be able to work with here for this project. And I don't know if I'm gonna try out both of them or one of them. I think they more or less do the same thing. We'll find out. And we're gonna need some acetone to break down the Bondo into a more liquid form. Now, let me very carefully state that you should not work with this in an enclosed environment. This stuff is very harmful for you to breathe in. If you're gonna be working with it, I recommend outside in a garage, door open, or next to a window with fans running so it's ventilating out. I'm gonna be doing all this outside while wearing a respirator. You definitely do not wanna be breathing in any of these materials, especially now that we're making them in a sprayable form. And I'll also be using some disposable gloves because I do not like getting Bondo on my fingers. And obviously we need something that you've 3D printed that we want to finish. So this is an Iron Man face mask from Nico Industries. And of course, this thing managed to fail during the printing process towards the very end. So I've gone off and reprinted the very tips of the face mask here. And I'm gonna use a little bit of 3D glue that I showed off in a video here just a few weeks ago, up in the corner of different ways that you can adhere different 3D printed parts together so that we can actually go through the process of smoothing this thing out. And before we get going, I wanna take a moment to say a big thank you to today's video sponsor, which is none other than Elgoo, the makers of the Elgoo Neptune 2 that I used to 3D print our Iron Man faceplate that we're using in today's video. They also make some amazing resin 3D printers like the Elgu Mars 3, the Elgu Saturn, as well as some new up and coming 3D printers that I'm eagerly awaiting getting my hands on. If you're interested in more information about any of Elgu's products, you can find links to those down below. And if you've never used Bondo Spot Putty before, let me show you how this works. It's basically just a liquidy putty material here that you can smear on your finger. I like to use gloves when working with this and you can basically just run it across your prop here and it's gonna go on in a relatively thick or thin, depending on how thick or thin you spread it, manner and allow you to just finger spread it on and it's gonna help fill in some of those seams but it is rather messy. And just after a minute or two, it's already starting to cure and harden up where it's not tacky or anything like that, which is great about this product. So if you let this sit for about a half an hour to an hour, it should be ready to start the sanding process. And one thing I'm very interested in us testing out is spraying onto the back side of the face mask here because it is so detailed. And normally you would not rub Bondo spot putty over something like this because it's just gonna gunk it up and be impossible for you to sand smooth. So when we get to spraying, I'm wondering how smooth this will actually go on. And I've already run into an issue with this project using these cheapo airbrush sets that I picked up from Harbor Freight. The connectors are crazy small and they come with an adapter, but even that doesn't fit on my typical airbrush compressor cables here. So thankfully I was able to go on Thingiverse and found an adapter that I was able to run off in 3D prints so that I could properly use these with my airbrush set. All right, so we're in the back of my studio, so let's get to mixing. We're going to squeeze a bit of Bondo in here. How much? I don't know. I'm just going to squeeze a hefty amount there. And then I'm going to take a, I'm going to take our acetone and pop this open. Mm. 
We want it to be pretty liquidy. I'm not sure if that's going to be too much. Not enough. We'll find out here. But we're going to want to mix this together so there's no clumps in it. Once we've got all that mixed together, we're going to want to pour it into our airbrush container. So I haven't even started the sanding process yet, but I can immediately say that uh, you have a lot more control over the application of this as expected because you're gonna be airbrushing it on so you can go as thin or as thick or as heavy as you want. It's obviously not gonna help fill in any of those massive divots or holes that you have. You're gonna still have to use some wood filler or just a whole lot of spackle or something to fill in those gaps. This spot putty stuff, especially in liquid form, is really just gonna help hide some of those thinner layer lines for you. And hopefully we'll see that even more when we get to the sanding. And it's also drying crazy fast. Results of spraying on Bondo Spot Putty by mixing it with some acetone. I'm honestly very impressed with the results that I'm seeing from this. I didn't have high expectations from this. I thought I was gonna have to do a whole lot of coats of this to actually get it smoothed out, to get a lot of the layer lines taken down, and I really didn't. By the way, that $10 airbrush set that I used for this project from Harbor Freight worked amazing and I would highly recommend that if you have a gunky junky job paint job like this that you wanted to try out uh, highly recommend that thing and the 3d printed adapter worked perfect and even the inside of the mask which is typically insanely hard to smooth out worked really well by just spraying on the Bondo mix there and it helps smooth out some of those layer lines. Obviously, it's not gonna be as good as the front because we were able to sand this down with some 220 grit sandpaper. But again, I only spent maybe five minutes, 10 minutes at most, sanding the front of the face plate here. And even where the 3D print failed and I had to reattach those, the one side looks really good because I think I just did a better job of using the 3D gloop and getting it on there and then just smoothing that out. And the other side doesn't look as good and clearly needs to be filled in with that massive gap. But I'm very impressed with how well this hid the layer lines overall for this project. Now, should you run out and get some acetone and Bondo Spot Putty and try this for yourself on your next 3D printed project, Maybe, it's, it's entirely up to you. I'm probably not gonna use this very often. The process was a little bit more involved just to get it set up. It was a little bit more messy than I would've liked it to have been. There's also more cleanup that's involved with cleaning up your airbrush set afterwards as well. But the results are clearly impressive that you're able to get from this. I might use this on some larger projects where I need to more evenly cover uh, large surfaces in a short amount of time. This is for sure easier than me using my finger and rubbing the Bondo Spot Putty all over a helmet or something like that. So it's, I mean, it's definitely worth something for you to try out, but again, make sure you're wearing a respirator or outside or well-ventilated area when working with acetone, and especially when you're making it sprayable via an airbrush, you do not want to be breathing in any of those materials. It's crazy bad for you. And I wanted to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support. If you're interested in my resin 3D printer settings, or just some behind the scenes info on what I'm working on, make sure to check out my Patreon. And again, make sure to check out Darkwing Dad's channel. He has some great tips and tricks on different videos on finishing your 3D prints. Does a fantastic deep dive job of covering the ins and outs of finishing up your projects. And if you have other suggestions on how to best smooth out your 3D prints, let me know down below because I'm all ears. And thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye now.